All right, let's take a look at how to find a power series solution to a differential equation centered around a regular uh, singular point. Now again, you wouldn't expect for a solution to exist there because P of X and or Q of X might be undefined there. Now to do this, we have to use something called the method of Frobenius. Uh, Frobenius was a mathematician that came up with the idea, well, we know uh, solutions about an ordinary point or a regular point would have the form, the sum n equals zero to infinity, sum uh, c sub n x minus, uh, what letter are we using? I'm not even using A's. Uh, a sub n x minus c to the n, whereas here c was our center. Well, if that center was a regular point, this would work. However, if our center is an irregular point uh, or a singular point, uh, then it will not work because this wouldn't be defined there. So Frobenius said for a uh, regular singular point, all we're going to do is we're going to take this power series and multiply it by a power of x. So we sum n equals 0 to infinity, uh, a sub n x minus c to the n, which of course, if we bring that into our summation, that's going to be a sub n x minus c to the n plus r. Okay, so this is going to be the form of our, our solution. So this is going to be our guess. Uh, now notice we've introduced another variable that we're going to have to take care of. We're going to have to figure out this value of r to come up with our, well in this case, two linearly independent solutions that we're going to be looking for. All right, so this is going to be the form of our answer. So for uh, space sake, let me go back up to the top here. and assume our solution, our y, is gonna be n equals zero to infinity, a sub n, uh, x minus c to the uh, n plus r. Now for this particular example, let's take a look at the differential equation, uh, 9x squared y double prime, plus 9x squared y prime plus 2y is equal to 0. All right, if I ask you to find a power series solution here, let's look for a uh, solution centered at x is equal to 0. Well, if we take this and we divide through by our lead function, we get y double prime plus, well, that's gonna be just y prime plus two over nine x squared y is equal to zero. We can see here our p of x is one, that's never undefined. Our q of x here though is two over nine x squared. And you can see this would be undefined or we'd have a singular point at x is equal to zero. So since our singular point is at x equals zero, we would need to determine is it regular or irregular. So if we do x times p of x and x squared times q of x, well of course x times p of x is just x, there's not a problem there. x squared times two over nine x squared, well notice the x squared is cancel and we get two ninths. So both of these are now uh, defined at x equals zero, so x equals zero is a regular singular point, spelled wrong. All right, regular singular point. So we should be able to find a power series solution centered at x equals zero because it is regular. You do always want to run through this test to make sure that you're, you can do this solution here. All right, so let's get our quick little test out of the way here. And we're assuming our solution, what we have up here at the top, is this. So if it's centered at zero, uh, infinity, we have a sub n x to the n plus r. Now we're going to take our derivatives to plug into our differential equation. So y prime, now remember you got to worry about our index down here. This is a sub n x to the n plus, a sub n n plus r uh, x to the n plus r minus one. Now remember at n equals zero, when we took derivatives centered around a regular point, our index counted up because this didn't exist there. However, notice if we plug n equals zero into this, 
this still exists, so the index doesn't count up. So let's take our second derivative, and uh, the same thing's gonna happen there, but this is gonna be a sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus one, x to the n plus r minus two. Now again, since this thing exists at n equals zero, and it also exists at n equals one, this still starts at n equals zero. Again, unlike when we centered around a regular singular point. All right, so let's take these, plug it into our differential equation and start cleaning up this mess. All right, so plugging in, we get nine x squared, n equals zero to infinity, a sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus one, <coughs> x to the n plus r minus two, nine x squared times n equals zero to infinity, a sub n, n plus r, x to the n plus r minus one, plus, and then we just have two times some n equals zero to infinity, a sub n, x to the n plus r equals zero. Okay, so once we plug it into our differential equations, we're gonna follow the same basic steps we did for any series solution. First thing we wanna do is bring in any uh, leading coefficients type thing, so let's bring these in. So you get sum n equals zero to infinity, a sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus one, uh, oops, I forgot my nine, put your nine right there. Uh, x squared times that just gives us x to the n plus r. Plus, here we got the sum n equals zero to infinity, nine a sub n, n plus r, x to the n plus r plus one. And here the two just moves in on the inside. Nothing really changes, so two a sub n, x to the n plus r equals zero. Okay, so we brought in all of our coefficients. Now we want to make sure all the exponents are the same. So here's when we let n or k equal the exponent. We do almost the same thing. Here we're gonna let k equal everything in the exponent except for the r. You want the r to be up there by itself. So here, everything up there that's not the r is just n. So that one's easy. For this one, we let k equal everything but the r. So that'll be n plus one. And over here, we're just gonna let uh, k equal n. All right, so remember, we're gonna do the substitution. So uh, if k equals n, it means, of course, n equals k. Here, n is equal to uh, k minus one, and over there, n is equal to k. So let's plug all this in here and see what happens. So this is the sum. Well, if n is zero, k is zero. If uh, n is infinity, k is infinity. 9 a sub k, we're basically just changing letters here, k plus r, k plus r minus 1, x to the uh, k plus r. All right, the next summation, this one's going to be a little bit messier. Move that up just a little bit. Let's say uh, k plus 1, uh, n is equal to k minus 1. All right, so if n is 0, uh, That's right. Uh, so if n is zero, what's k? Well, that'd be k is equal to one. So now when we plug in, this is gonna be a sub k minus one. Oh, that's an n, you put an x there. Uh, n plus r, oh, k minus one. Sorry for this. k minus one plus r, x to the uh, k plus r. Plus, and over here, we're just shifting our change in letters. So this is k equals zero to infinity, two a sub k, x to the k plus r is equal to zero. All right, let me look. I think we got that right. No more ends, right? Okay, now notice that was our first part. We had to get all the exponents on our x's the same. Next thing, if we want to squeeze this into one summation, all of our indices have to be the same. Of course, the tops are all infinity. Uh, our bottom indices are not the same. So we always want to get to the highest index, just like before. So we need to put a zero into this one, that'll get this up to k equals one, and we need to plug a zero into this one, that'll get that one up to k equals one. <clears throat> so when I plug zero in for k here, I get nine a naught, uh, that's gonna be r, r minus one, x to the r, and if I plug zero into the one at the far end, that's going to give me two a naught x to the r plus. 
Now, all these summations will now start at uh, k equals 1, goes to k equals infinity. And just like we did in class, all these now have an x to the k plus r, so I'm going to factor that out. So you end up with all of this. You get 9a sub k, k plus r, k plus r minus 1, plus 8, there's a 9 right there. 9a sub k minus 1, k minus 1 plus r, plus 2a sub k, x to the k plus r equals 0. All right, so let's, uh, let's see what we need to do. Now, all of this, what is this? Well, if I factor the a naught out of one side and the x to the r out of the other side, uh, you end up with something like this. a naught, we'd have 9r, r minus 1, plus 2x to the r. All right, now we're going to do the same basic idea that we did before. We're going to equate coefficients. Now, this is just, uh, x to the r is going to be some power of x. Uh, what is this? Well, if you take a look at this, this statement, this is the power of x to the 0, basically, with just that extra power of r. If we look at the other side of our equation, everything on the other side has a coefficient of 0. So one of these things has to be a 0. There's no reason to assume that our arbitrary uh, constant here is 0, so we wouldn't assume that. And there's no reason to assume that x is equal to 0. In fact, we wouldn't want it to be 0, because that would mean that that's the trivial solution. So that means that this has to be zero. This piece right here is extremely important because this is going to help us figure out what r is equal to. This actually has a name. This is called the initial equation. That's what's inside the square brackets here. The initial equation for a method of Frobenius is always this equation in r that is the coefficients for the lowest power of x. Now, notice our lowest power of x here was, this was when we plugged in k equals 0. So this gives us our lowest power. So here we end up with a quadratic equation, which is 9r squared minus 9r plus 2. That has to be equal to 0. Um, 18, 3, and 6. So that'll be 3r... 3r, 2, 1, minus, minus, right, 9, negative 6, negative 3, okay, so that works. So notice we get two values for r, we get r is equal to 1 third and r is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, these two r values are going to be the difference between our two linearly independent solutions. So what we normally do here, what do we do? We take this piece over here, and we're going to set this equal to zero because that's the coefficient for all the other powers of x and we're going to solve but there's a lot of algebra we can do to kind of clean this mess up uh, just a little bit so i'm going to go over here to the side and i'm going to do some algebra it may be helpful maybe not but let's uh let's take a look all right let me start just by writing what we have a sub k k plus r k plus r minus 1, 9, uh, a sub k minus 1, k minus 1 plus r plus 2a sub k. So this is this entire coefficient. See if I copied it right. Is there any way we can simplify this at all? Well, not a tremendous amount, maybe a little bit. Remember, normally what we do is we got to solve for the uh, highest power of the uh, indices. So we're going to end up solving for a sub k. I have two a sub k's here. So if I factor a sub k out of the two things that have that, we have 9 k plus r, k plus r minus 1, plus 2. And then we have 9 a sub k minus 1, k minus 1 plus r. All right, messy, messy, messy. Well, unfortunately, uh, sometimes you're going to get this that's going to simplify quite a bit. Unfortunately, here, this isn't going to simplify at all. 
So notice what we would do at this stage. We would take all of this, set it equal to zero and solve. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and just save us a little bit of work. I was, I was hoping this would simplify, but it doesn't look like it's going to. Let's go ahead and do the algebra and let's solve for the highest indices. So a sub k will be equal to negative nine a sub k minus one, k minus one plus r, divided by all of this mess, nine k plus r, k plus r minus one plus two. Okay, so there's our recursive relationship for our uh, coefficients. So I'm gonna bring that back over here and just say now we know, uh, just so we have some room to work over there, we can see that our a sub k was, let's see, it was negative nine a sub k minus one, k minus one plus r, all over nine k plus r, k plus r minus one plus two. Okay, now notice that this still has r's in it because we're actually gonna end up with two different recursive relationships uh, depending on which r we're gonna use. We're gonna have to take this equation, plug in r equals one third, and then uh, we're gonna come up with one formula, and then we're gonna take this equation, we're gonna plug in two thirds for r and come up with the second formula. Each one of these r's is gonna generate one of our linearly independent solutions. So I'm gonna go back over here to the right and see if we can come up with our two recursive formulas. So here's what we started with. I'm just going to write it again up here for us. We have a sub k, negative 9 a sub k minus 1, k minus 1 plus r, all over 9 k plus r, k plus r minus 1 plus 2. Okay, so let's take a look. We have two r values. So what happens if I put r equals uh, one third, right? That, yeah, that was one of our r values. So you take this, plug in r is equal to one third. So our recursive formula is negative nine, a k minus one, k minus one plus one third, all over nine, k plus one third, k plus one third minus one plus two. All right, arithmetic time. A sub k is equal to negative nine, a sub k minus one. Of course, negative one and positive one third would be k minus two thirds, all over nine k plus one third, k minus two thirds plus two. Now, that looks like you really want to cancel that, but remember that plus two makes it so you can't do that. All right, so from this point, what would we normally do? We'd start picking values for k. Remember, k here starts at one, according to our thing over there. We'd start plugging them in, except for you'd end up with all these horrible fractions. So let's do a little bit of arithmetic here and see if you follow what I'm gonna do. This nine, I'm gonna treat as three times three. If I take one of these threes and multiply it into that uh, binomial there, we would get a sub k is equal to negative three a sub k minus one, three k minus two, right? Just take one of the factors of three distributed. On the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna think about that nine as a three times three, just to clean this up. I'm gonna take one of the threes and multiply it into the first binomial and take another one and multiply it into the second one. If I do that, I get three k plus one, three k minus two plus two. All right, so that type of trick normally happens quite a bit on these, so keep an eye out for that. You really don't want your recursive formula to have all these horrible fractions in there. Okay, so that's the recursive formula we're gonna use for r equals one third. So let's put that to the side for a second and come up with our recursive formula for uh, the r value of two thirds. So again, we just take our formula up here and everywhere there's an r, we're gonna put two thirds. So we get a sub k is equal to negative nine, a sub k minus one, k minus one plus two thirds, all over nine, k plus two thirds, k plus two thirds minus one plus two. 
All right, same type of thing, just a bunch of arithmetic here. A sub K minus one, that's gonna be K minus one third, nine K plus two thirds, K minus one third plus two. I'm gonna do the exact same trick with the threes that I did over there. So uh, on the top, I'm gonna to take one factor of three and multiply it over there. So negative three A sub K minus one, three K minus one, I'm going to take this 9 and take each factor and multiply it into a different binomial. So that's 3k plus 2, 3k minus 1 plus 2. Okay, so we end up with two recursive uh, formulas for each one of these. So let's go for each one of these formulas. Let's go back over here, make ourselves some room, and start running out some constants. All right, now remember, each one of these formulas is starting at k equals one, because that's where our summation was for. So we're gonna start plugging k equals one into each one of these. So way back over here, let's go ahead and get rid of that too. Uh, let's do for the r equals one third. For r equals one third, our recursive formula was a sub k was, looking way back to the other side, Negative 3ak minus 1, 3k minus 2, all over 3k plus 1, 3k minus 2, plus 2. So we're just going to run out a couple here. Again, k starts at 1 because that's where our summation was at. So a sub 1 is equal to... That's going to be negative 3 a naught. If we plug 1 into here, that's going to be 3 minus 2, or 1. All over, plugging 1 into here, that's 4. 1 into there is 1 plus 2. So it's negative 3 a naught all over 6. Again, let's get all this out the way. Okay, hold on. or that's just negative one half a naught. Let's do two more here, just so we can kind of see what's going on. So k equals two, plugging two in here, so we get a sub two is equal to negative three a one, that's gonna be six minus four, which would be two, six plus one would be seven, uh, six minus two is four plus two, that gives me negative 6a1 all over, what's that going to be, 13? Okay, now notice here we have a recursive relationship, which means we know a1 is negative 1 half a naught. So if I plug that in here, I get negative 6 thirteenths times negative 1 half a naught, or it's going to be... Uh, so that's going to be 3 thirteenths a naught. Let me see. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Let's see. Hold on. Let me check something. 6, 7, 6, 4, 7. Oh, 7. That's times. That's not adding. Hold on. Arithmetic, people. Pay attention. Pay attention to what you're doing. So what's that going to be? 4 sevens is... Anybody? Fine. I'll do it. 28. So that gives us 30. So that's negative one-fifth A1. And again, we have a relationship for A1. So that's negative one-fifth, negative one-half A0, which gives us one-tenth A0. Now notice already that we're referring back to only one constant. Normally, with our uh, when we centered around a regular point, we had A0 and A1 showing up here. But we're only generating one arbitrary constant, which means that this is only generating one linearly independent solution. So here we get a sub three, let's try one more, and then we'll switch over to the other one. All right, so uh, where was that? So we plug in three in here, so it's negative three a sub two. Uh, plugging in three here, nine minus two would be seven, all over, plugging three into here, nine plus one is 10. Nine minus two is seven plus two. So this is negative 21 a two all over 72. 
again, we know what uh, A2 is. That's the last one we found. So negative 21 over 72 times 1 tenth A naught would be negative 21 over 720 A naught. Okay, so uh, here we've generated uh, several of our coefficients for the R equals one third term. Okay, so let's now generate some for the R equals two thirds term. So I'm gonna go right here in the middle. For R equals two thirds, our recursive formula was, again, I'm referring way back over there, negative three A sub K minus one, three K minus one, all over 3k plus 2, 3k minus 1 plus 2. All right, again, I'm going to run out about three constants here. Remember, our k starts at 1. So if k is equal to 1, a sub 1 is equal to negative 3, a naught. Uh, 3 minus 1 would be 2. All over 3 plus 2 would be 5. 3 minus 1 is 2 plus 2. So it's negative six over 12 a naught or negative one half a naught. That's weird, it ended up being the same. Hmm. All right, let's do uh, k equals two. So a sub two is negative three uh, a one. Six minus one would be five. Plugging in two, six plus two is eight times six minus one is five plus two. So this is negative 15 A1 all over 42. Uh, will that reduce? Yeah, three will go into both of them. So let's go ahead and reduce that, just keep it a little bit smaller. So that's negative five over uh, 14 uh, A1 which is negative five fourteenths times negative one half uh, A naught Get all of our other work out of the way. And so that's uh, 5 28 a naught. All right, let's do one more and then we'll try to put together this entire solution. So for k equals 3, uh, a sub 3 is negative 3 a sub 2. Let's see, plug in 3 in here. 9 minus 1 would be 8. 9 plus 2 is 11. 9 minus 1 is 8 plus 2. That's negative 24 uh, a sub 2 over 88, 90. Uh, so let's see, they're both even. So that's going to be negative 12 45ths a2. Well, we know a2 is this. So it's going to be negative 1 12th uh, or negative, negative 12 45ths times 5 28 a naught, which is something. All right, so there's our a sub three, and I'm not multiplying that out. Now we've ran out some constants for each one of our r values, but what are our solutions? So to put it together, I'm going all the way over here and see if we can come up with our two linearly independent solutions. So for our first linearly independent solution, let's call this y sub one. Remember our basic, actually let me come up here, our basic solution looked like this. Our solution was going to be x to the r, n equals 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the n. So for our first solution, we would have x to, which one did I do first? I did one third first. So it's going to be one third times this, so n equals 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the n. And our y sub 2, give myself some room, would be x to the 2 thirds. So n equals 0 to infinity a sub n x to the n. So for our y sub 1, we'd have x to the 1 third. Now remember for this, we just start plugging this in. So that'd be a naught times x to the 0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus so on and so forth. How far we go? We went to a sub 3. So a sub 3x cubed on forever. But now we know what some of those coefficients are. So we have x to the 1 third times a naught, well, that's arbitrary. a1 was negative 1 half a naught, that's going to be x. 
a sub 2 was 1 tenth a naught. a sub 3 was negative, what was it, uh, 21 over 720 a naught x cubed, so on and so forth. So I normally notice this only has one uh, arbitrary constant, so this gives us one of our linearly independent solutions. We generally factor out that a naught. And if you wanted to, you could multiply this power of x in there. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to write this as uh, a naught x to the one third, one minus one half x plus one tenth x squared minus 21 7 twentieths x cubed. There's one of our linearly independent solutions. Let's go ahead and find the last one again, the exact same method. So y2 is going to be x to the two thirds a naught, a1x, a2x squared, a3x cubed, on forever. So y sub 2 is going to be x to the 2 thirds. a naught still arbitrary. a1 from our second formula was uh, negative 1 half a naught x, 5 28 a naught x squared, and our last one was this mess. I don't know what this is. Well, it would be 60 over whatever 45 times 28 is, x cubed, oh, a naught. So on and so forth. So the last thing, let's go ahead and factor out our a naught. And I'm going to leave the power again on the outside. So y2 is going to be equal to a naught x to the 2 thirds, 1 minus 1 half x, 5 28 x squared minus whatever this is. 4528x cubed, so on and so forth. All right, so there we are basically. Now remember our entire solution, uh, y is going to be equal to. Now these arbitrary constants, we have them both listed as a naught. But remember, they have to be different arbitrary constants. So most of the time I would just call this one, I don't know, uh, what were we using before, like uh, C1 and C2 or some different thing. So you would just do some constant times y1 plus another arbitrary constant times y2. Basically just change these to their two different arbitrary constants and that is your solution. All right, uh, the good news is this works a lot the same way as our solutions about a regular point. Uh, the only difference is, is we end up with two recursive formulas based on the different values we have for r. Now this is called for Benius case one. Case one is where our two R values differed by something other than an integer. If they differ by an integer or you have a repeated R value, those are much more difficult cases to worry about and we're not gonna cover that this semester. All right, so that finishes up for method of Frobenius. It was fun, had a good time.